Hi guys, I'm Arisa Ugu. Welcome to season two of The Bridge, Africa's number one financial literacy show brought to you by Business Day. This season is proudly sponsored by FCMB and we're going to be shaking things up a bit by interviewing millennial business leaders and celebrities and talking to them about the business models and financial decisions that have led to their success. In this episode, we're going to be talking to Nana Jacob Ogogo, who's the head of the Women in Business Desk at FCMB. Stay tuned. Super excited to have Nana Jacob Ogogo, mm -hmm. who heads the Women in Business um, desk at FCMB. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming on the bridge. Thank you. Thank you. So, do you want to talk a little bit about what you do at FCMB? What's it like heading the Women in Business desk? Okay, so. Um the Women in Business Desk in FCMB was set up not too long ago, uh, about six months now. Basically, FCMB has always been passionate about women. Okay, it comes through in our staff strength. Um, you find that we have a high representative of women on in our management, effective okay. management. In fact, this year we won the best place to work for women. Yeah, right. we won that award. So we're passionate about women. And we realized that uh, we did some research and found out that women-owned SMEs in Nigeria account for about 48% of the population. Okay. However, only about 17% of these businesses are supported by banks. Okay, what that means really is if, if these SMEs had more support from their banks, they would be more scalable exactly. and more financially like viable businesses. Yeah. And the economy would be much better mm. as well. That's amazing. I love that statistic because I hear it all the time. Half the people, half the entrepreneurs in Africa are women. Half the um, entrepreneurs in Nigeria are women. But it always makes me think about the fact that even if we say maybe fifty percent of them are women, how many women-owned businesses have a huge impact on our economy? How does it impact our bottom line as a country? Because you find that a lot of these um, businesses that are women. Um, run our subsistence style businesses they don't make enough profits to really contribute in a strong way um, to our economy so what's FCMB doing to help women like grow their businesses or make their businesses more scalable or more profit focused uh, okay thank you for asking that I would say. you're completely correct okay when you look at the statistics so 50 percent are women-owned businesses and you look at the number okay you're talking about over 7 million plus SMEs, mm. how is that affecting the bottom line? What impact is that having on the economy? At the moment, not very much really, because mm. like you said, you know, the women get involved in these businesses mm. really to make a living. Yeah. So they do it and they're a lot of them are living from hand to mouth, mm. okay? What is FCMB doing about this? A lot of times when, um, you know, you come to, maybe you go to your bank and you say, I need a loan mm. as a businesswoman. Sometimes you find out that you don't need a loan, okay? A lot of women businesses are not being run in a structured format. Mm. So they really have no idea what's going what on in their yeah. books. So I have, I'm running a business, I run a salon, for example, okay? Um, I make my daily, um, people come into the salon, they, cash. they make their hair, yeah, there's cash. I'm going home that evening. Mm. I remember that I haven't bought, you know, we need to cook dinner in the house. So from the sales of that day, okay, I go to the market. Mm. Um, my child is ill. I take the child to the hospital. From the cash sales of that day, I go to the market. My business account is not a business account. It may be in the business name, mm. but the daily running of my house, my children's it school fees, everything goes through that account. So I really, I have no idea what my profit margins are. I don't know what my costs are. Mm. I don't know whether I'm making a living, mm. right? And then I find that I've been running this business for one year. My life is really not better. So what we're doing is not just, um, we found out that most of the challenges that women are facing, one, access to finance, which everybody mm. knows. But then there's a huge gap, access to knowledge. Yeah, so skills. Yeah, so we're, we're doing a lot of capacity building, okay? Mm. We've been holding quite a number of trainings on the March 19th, which was the Women's Entrepreneurship. Seriously. <laughs> 
Okay, okay, March 19th. Yeah. So sorry, that's <laughs> I was thinking of November 19th. Oh, yes, entrepreneurship. Women's yeah, entrepreneurship yeah. day, specifically for women, women yeah. entrepreneurs from um, worldwide. Okay. So we had a tax training at the Civic Center and we invited quite a number of our customers. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them are very excited, okay? They learned more about how taxing, taxation affects their businesses, you know, mm -hmm. the do's and the don'ts. Don't. And we're holding quite a number of those trainings, not just taxes, we're um, talking about um, budgeting for your business, profitability, um, how you do your balance sheets and all yeah. that. So these are the kind I of things we're giving. I definitely hear you because I think that um, I spoke to people who have run businesses for like five years and they don't have a balance sheet. They don't have a cash flow statement. They don't have a PL. Like it is amazing because it means that, you know, you're just making assumptions. You're not making, exactly. you know, financial decisions. And most people don't understand that you don't even have to be an accountant mm -hmm. to understand these things. You just need to know how to interpret the numbers and what, you know, they mean for your business exactly. um, so that you can make proper decisions. Exactly. So, so aside from tax, what other kind of training are you doing or skills acquisition are you doing for women in business to sort of learn about, you know, what their revenue streams are, what their cost structure is and how to be profit focused? Okay, so it's not just tax trainings. Mm -hmm. um, sorry if I wasn't clear about that, okay. Over the course of this year, we've actually done quite a number of trainings in Port Harcourt, Abuja, Lagos. Mm -hmm. Even though this was for the generality of our customers, not male and female customers. And we were talking about not just taxes, but also running a business profitably. Okay. So we taught them all about that. We had about, I think the minimum we, number we had was about 250 oh, at a session. Yeah. So we've trained, we've trained over a thousand of our customers this year alone on various business subjects. So things like how to go to market, how to develop like a customer acquisition yes, strategy how to, yes so how to also doing a profitable business mm. okay um we talked about extending credit because a lot of us don't know that when we have businesses and we sell on credit we're actually extending credit facilities to our customers meanwhile we don't have any credit facilities yeah. so you know a lot of stuff like that as well um and then also we when the process of creating a virtual hub it's almost up mm. and we're going to have a lot of these trainings online because no matter how much we try, we can't reach all Everyone, our customers. Yeah. Exactly. But these trainings are going to be on a virtual hub and anybody, not just FCMB we'll customers. Be able to access yes, it. Yes, everybody will be able to access it. For that. fee or for free or majority of the trainings are going to be free. Mm -hmm. Okay. There will be some trainings that to to access them, you probably have to be an FCMB customer. Mm -hmm. We're also going to be partnering with some consultants who would be charging a fee for some of those trainings, depending on the kind of specialized um, industry we're mm. talking about we're going to make sure we get them at very discounted rates for our customers so maybe so you FCMB would... sort of like subsidizes it for their customers well not or just negotiate no, we're just negotiating very good rates because if you were a consultant for example mm. and you gave trainings okay mm. there's a limit to the number of people that you'll be able to get but if mm. FCMB is telling you oh i mean give it to us at half the price for our customers you're going to have much more clients more here. people exactly so we're getting very good that's amazing so let's talk a little bit about what the women in business desk does in terms of loans because you know this is a very touchy subject in nigeria yes, i find that a lot of the banks like they get very excited about female entrepreneurs and they want to jump on that bandwagon but when you really look at the products that they offer it's not that different from what is available regularly. They've just branded it a women, pink you know, desk. a pink, exactly, <laughs> a pink desk. Mm -hmm. So I'm a woman in business and I know that the type of things that we're worried about are things like interest rates. interest rates. Like if I'm getting a women in business sort of loan, like is it a reduced interest rate? Is it, do I have to not put collateral down? Um, what do you offer in terms of loans or access to credit that's more you know, female friendly? Mm. I, I really like that you asked me this question because we have some very exciting things in store for our customers. Yay. I'll start from the not so exciting ones, okay? First of all, loan, loans in Nigeria are a very touchy subject because you know, customer expensive. comes. Yes, but then cost of funds are very expensive. Mm. Okay, so I try to explain to to people I speak with. 
it's not that the banks want to give high interest rates, okay? There, there's lots of things that go on, and They're I don't want to be too technical. Yeah. Exactly. Cost of funds, we talk about CRL from, um, um, from Central, Bank. Central Bank, exactly. So the, the loans that banks are going to have to mm. give to customers will be priced a bit expensive. Mm. FCNB knows we really can't do so much about that. So we're partnering with DFIs to see whether we can get loans at much reduced rates, okay? Yes. For my audience, what are DFIs? Because you know, these are millennials, we need to break it down. <laughs> okay, so I'm so sorry. So that's Development Financial Institutions. Okay. So like um, Bank of Industry, mm. the, um, Development Bank of Nigeria, DBN. And then we have some international ones, the IFC, mm. the EU and all that. So those are Development development Financial Institutions. Fantastic. So we're trying to get, um, so we have one, for example, gender loan right now that's mm. running at 14%, which is low. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, we so that's with um BOI, okay, and it's not just so most BOI loans are restricted to industries, but this one's with you across all industries as long okay? as you're female, as long as you're female. Mm -hmm. So, four years maximum of four years is moratorium period of six months. So, that's something that um should get our women excited. Okay. Now, FCNB, hold on, collateral. What yes. kind of collateral do you need? So like that would be the normal requirements. So okay. normal collateral requirements, okay? So basically, I'm getting a loan at 14% yes. because I'm a woman. So it's As substantially to like 26, cheaper. Yes, yeah. 26, 27%. However, like what the cocoa of the matter in mm. all these things is always the requirements. So mm. let's talk a little bit about what those requirements are. So you need collateral. So let's say I was taking a loan of 10 million. Mm -hmm. How much collateral would I need? Would it be maybe 20% of what I'm asking for or the full amount or? Exactly slightly more than the full amount, depending on the type of collateral you're putting down. Okay. So for example, if it's landed property, you'd be talking about um, a property that's worth about 120% of the loan amount. So that's 12 million, mm. okay? You could have shares, you could have T-bill, treasury bills. Mm -hmm. So there, there are lots of things that could be used as collateral. You can also use assets to collateral, right? So we have mm. what's called an all asset adventure. Mm. So you have a factory, for example, we could take the equipment Machines, you have yeah. exactly in the factory as collateral. So it depends. We have, we're a bit flexible, but we're also partnering and um, there's something called the collateral registry. So formerly, a lot of banks that didn't, um, used to take assets as collateral. Okay. But now, so far as that collateral has been registered in the collateral registry, mm. okay, then we're ready to accept that. So that's, we're expanding. So basically, for those in the back, what the bank is saying is, if you don't pay that back, if you don't pay them back their money, they need something that they're going to be able to sell go. off so that they can get their money back, right? So 120% um, to oh, back the yes, loan. Yes. Because remember, no bank wants to sell off anybody's property, right? Mm -hmm. But the truth also is You're we're dealing a business, with... You need to secure well, yourself. Not just that we're running a business, we're dealing with other people's funds. Mm. Yeah, so like your money is part of the money that we're giving out. And yes. we have to guarantee that you will get your money back whenever you come for it. Okay. So we need to make sure that we're getting these loans back. Mm. That's really why banks take collateral. So, so we also have, other, okay. yes, we also have, um, there's a very exciting product that we're coming out with, okay? And it's a zero interest loan. There's no bank that is doing this. Okay. FNB is going to be offering female businesses a 0% interest loan. What's okay? the catch? There's none. Seriously. Really? Yes. It's from, so the band is about between, from 1 million to about 5 million Naira, okay? Mm -hmm. No collateral for four months, okay? All we ask is that we give you this loan, you pay it back, okay? Because what we want to do is, obviously we can't extend this to all our female customers. Mm -hmm. So we have a certain number, okay, that we'll be doing every quarter. Okay. And we want to encourage women, what, what we're basically doing with this loan, it's not just the loan, we're also tying it into a training and mentorship program. Okay. Because even when you do give people loans, whether they male don't or know female, what to do with exactly. This so you have to make sure that you're giving a woman a loan, but you're also ensuring that she knows the right things, okay? Mm. So that that money, not just that the money will come back, but you also scale up her business. Mm. So what we expect is that for each person that takes this, that has access to this loan, you go through the training program. There's a mentorship program also for one year. So you have a mentor that will be assigned to you that will guide you. By the time you look back a year after, you sure. must have seen a difference in mm. your business. So we can offer, offer this every quarter to about 40 women in a year. That's about 40 times four. That's about 160 women mm. every year. 
then you start seeing the impact on so, the economy. So let's say I was one of the 40 women mm -hmm. and you gave me 5 million, right? And I paid it back this quarter. Would I be able to get renew the loan again the next quarter? Like, do you keep rolling it over? Because I'm wondering if it's the same 40 women or if it kind of really becomes 160. Okay, so what we have said is to encourage women to actually do better. Mm. Okay, if we give you this loan and you actually your business, your turnover increases by 50 percent mm. we will give you a second time mm. okay? but that's it you can get it only two times Twice. yeah because we have other loans what we expect is that by the time you've been you've had access to this loan you more or less your business is more or less stable so you I can see now what you're doing i see what the cash doing? is now <laughs> now i get it so basically uh -huh. you draw them in help mm. them grow their businesses and mm. they become your customers oh yeah because now after doing it twice they now become viable customers for your other um, loans where you can now charge them. <laughs> I love it. No, so long as the women, so long <laughs> as the women, will always try to give them better interest rates. Okay, I yeah. love it. So, what else? What else are you doing um, to help women in business in Nigeria? Okay, so one of the other challenges we identified as an impediment to women's businesses is networking and access to markets. Mm. A lot of us women don't know how to network, mm. so we don't know how to build the right connections yes so what we've been doing i mean for the past six months is we've actually been sponsoring a lot of women events okay, okay. and we're working with some female women organizations okay that what have is? large numbers we haven't yet started working with, with them working yes we do know that we are the best <laughs> I'll think you're working that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're doing, okay? And we're working with some women organizations. And then apart from that, we so the virtual hub I spoke about, we're gonna have closed communities for different segments of the industry. So we might have for the fashion business, for the big mm. business. We're doing a lot of things in the tech space because there are lots of women coming up in the tech space. Right. Yeah. So we'll have communities on the website, okay, and then you know, people are chatting and talking about issues in their industry. Mm. And the next thing he says, oh, guys, so do you want to have a meetup? And then we arrange a meetup for that community. Okay. So networking opportunities. Mm. What, what, yeah. Um, so you're giving them access to also, like, maybe women or other business leaders yes. that they wouldn't necessarily have access exactly. to. Exactly. So maybe they come to those meetups? Yeah, so they come to those mm. meetups, okay, and they have the opportunity to meet these people. And then other people in that same industry as well that would mm. add value to their businesses. We're also partnering with some online businesses, okay, so that we're able to take our customers' business online. There's, mm. some, there's a group we're talking to right now that will enable our local customers to sell their goods internationally. So these are some of the things that we're doing to also support and scale up their businesses. I love it because I feel like, like I said before, a lot of Nigerian financial institutions basically just put a Stamp. a stamp over pink and stamp. say it's pink and you know it's for women but you sound like you've put so much thought into um building a desk that really helps women scale their businesses um not just offering them loans but also giving them like skills acquisition so that they can you know really build um businesses that are for you know profits thank you so much nana like it was thank so you. lovely speaking to you thank i you. wish you so much luck Thank and I'm you. super excited to come and talk to you in a couple of months yes. about these zero interest Interesting. loans. Yes, yes, yes. yes, Thank you so much. Thank you. It's hard to expand my business. You know, many farmers depend on me. All these banks say they don't see my vision. Sorry for interrupting. That's not exactly true. Just last year, I had planned to expand my hospitality business. It was tough, but I met the right people. Who exactly are these people? My bank. FCMB. With the right people who believe in your visions, getting to your desired destination is easier and quicker. Let's help you take the next step. FCMB, my bank and I. Three highlights from that episode were one, FCMB is offering gender specific loans to women. So they have a loan that is around 14 15%, which is considerably cheaper than if you were getting a normal loan which would be about 22 to 26 percent so it's cheaper it's catered to women you still have to have collateral of about 120 percent but the good news is they off they're also offering a zero percent 
um, loan to a limited number of women, about 40 you know, to 50 women, who they're also going to provide mentorship for. So they'll bring in mentors to help you with your business. They give you a 0% um, loan they bring, give you mentors to help you grow your business. Um, I think that's a really fantastic thing. I'm definitely looking um, forward to that. So the second highlight was the skills acquisition part. I really love this because a lot of entrepreneurs in Africa say, oh, the biggest problem I have in business is I don't have access to capital. But I find that talking to a lot of entrepreneurs, they don't even have a business model that works yet so even if you did have access to capital or debt or you know equity you wouldn't know how to apply it in a way that makes your business profitable so fcmb is offering um skills acquisition training to help people um learn about their taxes learn about how to read their financial statements learn about how to go to market how to brand and all that good stuff so i love that so the final highlight from that episode was fcmb is helping women network better which i think is such a great thing because you know you hear this phrase a lot your network is your net worth but i've realized in, in recent times that your network is only your net worth if you can use it to create opportunities or remove obstacles and according to nena they found that a lot of women don't network effectively so they're creating um, opportunities and training to help women network better i'm always saying is there's no point going to a hundred events and saying oh i know this woman in business who is like a business leader and she gave me her card but you've never connected with her all you do is maybe say hello auntie but the real question is can you pick up the phone and call her and say I need this opportunity can you help me out with it or i have this problem can you help me solve it it's about creating meaningful relationships that hopefully lead to profit in your business thank you so much for watching this episode see you next time